five reasons why we lost against West Ham yesterday. Shocking. Hello everyone and welcome back to Blues Fans TV. I am Sophie Rose. Now, first of all, before I start this video, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who subscribed. We have now reached 100,000 subscribers and I hope you all continue to love watching our channel. Uh, your support means the world to us and I'm so glad that you've enjoyed watching our videos for the last couple of years, especially since we rebranded a year ago. Um, you know, we've really tried to provide you with the best content and we've had some, uh, you know, um, back steps along the way, but, you know, due to the virus and, and everything, but I'm so glad that you're enjoying the videos and I'm so glad that football is back. So thank you so much. Now we're gonna get into the video and it's not a happy video. Uh, I've calmed down a little bit now. I, I never like to do these analysis, you know, right after the game. I like to wait until I've calmed down a bit and I can think about it rationally, but I'm still fuming. <laughs> I'm still fuming in a very polite way. Five reasons why we lost against West Ham yesterday. Shocking. In at number one then, and I think we need to talk about our £70 million goalkeeper, and that is Kepa. Now, whilst I'm going to get on to my second point in a minute, which is the four guys in front of him, um, you know, I don't think he had a good game. I think for £70 million, your keeper's got to do better than letting in three goals. Uh, I think the first goal, or actually the, the first goal that was actually ruled by ruled off by VAR, I think he could have, could have done a lot more there. Um, you know, that could have got us into a really bad situation before half time. Okay, fine, went in at a draw, but I think Ever just stands there. Don't think he really makes any attempt to save the ball whatsoever. Um, he could, um, could also argue that it's bad defending, but I think he's got to do better in that situation. Um, and again, with the second goal, I mean, it's a, it's a header in. Antonio is a, is a great. It's a great player for West Ham, whether you rate him highly or not to play for a top team. I still think he's a very good and talented footballer. Um, yeah, I just think Kev could have done better. You might disagree with me on that. You may think, oh no, it was, it was the back four's fault and stuff and he could have done. But I think that, you know, when you're a goalkeeper worth 70 million, you're letting in three goals. Uh, something's gone wrong there. Uh, technically, you let in four goals uh, if it wasn't ruled off the VAR. But even that VAR was, was very, very slim. I mean, I actually agree with the decision for once. I think if that was Chelsea, we wouldn't have got the goal either. Uh, I think they're literally looking at a millimetre uh, of his leg being offside. And, um, you know, hard, tough tough luck to West Ham there. And I think I saw, heard Gary Neville say, oh, no, they'll be fuming with that. Bitch. That should have been a goal. Uh, I actually think it shouldn't have been a goal. Um, but you could argue either way, I suppose. Um, but, you know, I just think Kevin's got to do better. I think he's got to do better. They're, they're a bottom half of the table team. We never have the best record against West Ham. I, I get that, you know, I've been to many games at the Olympic Park and we've just not really performed as well as against other opponents. And it, and it doesn't really make any sense to me because West Ham aren't really major rivals of Chelsea. Yes, it's a London derby, but is it the same as a Chelsea Arsenal, Chelsea Tottenham fixture? No, because they're, to me, they're just not in our league. So for us to lose that is a little bit humiliating to me. And uh, Kepa has got to, got to do better in goal. In at number two then, where to start with the defence? The defence for me is where this all went completely and utterly tits up. Um, I'm going to take a look at the first goal, for instance. Now, I don't want to blame Dave too much for this, because if you're looking at his, the guy, I don't, I don't know how you say his, Sorchek, however you say his name, you know, the guy who scored for West Ham. Um, he's about two foot taller, <laughs> two, three foot taller. I don't know what that is in feet, but he's miles taller than Dave. So Dave is marking his man. He's, he's doing everything he should, but... He is is too short for him, basically. Um, in terms of the other three, you know, the the, the main point I want to make make about these these next two goals that we let in. I'm going to get to the second goal first. The second goal, I don't know what Rudiger and Christensen are doing. You know, there are centre backs. They're not they're not marking their players. They are leaving Antonio wide open to score that goal. Um, Christensen, in, in particular, I've heard a lot of criticism for Rudiger and, and fair play, but. I do think that Christensen should have done way better there. You know, you've got one job as a defender and that is to mark your player and make sure there aren't any gaps left in that defence for them to slip through and score a goal. And that's exactly what happened in that second goal. You know, that is basic defending. It reminded me a lot of Arsenal's defence on a weekly basis. Uh, we don't want to be compared to their defence. Nobody wants to be compared to Arsenal's defence. They are, but without a doubt, for me, they've got one of the worst defences um, in the league. And I think that's why you've seen them drop so far. You know, they should be up in the top top six for me and um, they're not there so a lot of that is to do with defending issues and we have a lot of that you know that was just really really poor from Rudiger and Christensen yesterday um and then for the third goal Alonso hey 
when, <laughs> and this actually goes for, you know, I think Rudiger obviously did his best at the back there by himself. We'd obviously pushed forward in an effort to try and get the three points towards the end of the game. Um, and you know when that happens, there's always a risk of there being a counter-attack, which there was. But Alonso is just walking back. I mean, I don't don't really know what he's doing there. You know, in, the, in that situation, you have got a sprint for your life to get back and try and defend the ball. Whether you could have made it or not is a different story, but just uh, people watching the ball. So I call it people watching. Ball watching, people watching, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just, it's just a bit unacceptable and I, and I like Alonso and I think he's a great wing back. I don't think he's a very good full back. Uh, I think Alonso is a player that loves to push forward, loves to get a goal every now and again. Um, but again, I think that's more of a wing back position and I think Frank went into this with a back four and they've got to be a stable back four and I don't think you can really make a case for any of them, any of the back four doing a good job yesterday and, and I do blame the defence for our loss. Um, I'm not saying Barkley had a particularly good game, um, but you know when the changes came on, we did look a little bit more fierce. Uh, we did look like we were pressing forward a lot more. Uh, but when you have a defence like that, you are prone to conceding goals, and that's exactly what happened. So Rudiger and Christensen need to do better there. Uh, I'd be very surprised if Christensen was in the team next next week, uh, this week, um, for the next game. I. If Frank does what he says he does and plays players based on merit, there's no way you can put him back in the team after that. Um, you know, I'm being extra critical because this is a West Ham side. This is not a, you know, rival of, this is not a Manchester United where we're, we're very, very close in the table together. You know, that, those three goals cost us the chance to go top three yesterday. Instead, we didn't even come away with a draw. We came away with zero points. Which again means we've got to win every game now. It just puts extra pressure on us. So we could have had a nice cushion. It could have put a lot more pressure on United and Leicester to do better. I think in football mentality is a huge part, and that would have put them under pressure and that would have worried them a little bit. And now we've just made them think that oh, Chelsea are always going to slip up, slip up. So you know, no problem. It's West Ham guys. We've got to do better. So poor defending there. Not happy with Rudiger. Not happy with Christensen. Dave, it would be great if you could be a bit taller, but <laughs> we can't do anything about that. Um, and Alonso, your your work ethic, your work rate needs to improve. Focus. That would be good. Okay, number three then. I'm going to go into our up front. Uh, I'm not really going to talk about this too much because I feel like we've already been through it a thousand million times. We know that we are awaiting our new signer Werner to come in um, and, and, and sort of improve things there. But at the end of the day, we haven't really got a seal for Tammy. I don't think did much all game. Um, you know, even when he tried to, to do a little bit of defending and I'm all four strikers getting back and getting on the goal line and, and doing exactly what he did. Uh, but he only had to stand there. You know, he's a very, I don't know how tall Tammy is. He's very, very tall, double the size of me probably. I'm 5'5". Five five. Well, maybe not double the size of me, but he's a tall lad. He only had to stand there. I don't know why he's trying to kick the ball <laughs> into the air. I think Lauren said like a scissor kick. Yeah, like it's a bit weird. Um... But, you know, he didn't really do much. He didn't really... Um, maybe that's because he's not really getting service. Um, but I think he had quite a lot of service. In the, it, You know, William made a lot of crosses in. Um, we were crossing the ball into the box continuously. Um, OK, fine, West Ham defended quite well. But when you're a Chelsea striker, you need to be able to figure out a way to get past, to get past those defenders and use your initiative. You know, you need to have a bit of aggression. Chelsea have always done well with having a very aggressive striker. You know, I think... In DDA Drogba, we had him, he'd take a chance, he could, you know, almost read where the ball was coming in and move himself into space. I don't really see that from Tammy. Um, you look at the likes of Diego Costa, always able to get a goal out of nowhere, even if the team aren't performing particularly well. And that's what we need from Tammy. So I think he's got a lot of work to do there. And obviously Giroud, he had a second choice striker. Um, I'm not too critical of him sometimes because I think he... Everybody else's play improves when he's on the pitch. Um, he's able to link up with players a lot better than some of our forwards, particularly, I probably think, better than Tammy. Um, but he didn't really do much either. So, yeah, our, our front situation is something that's continuous and um, I'm not going to dwell on that too much. But, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't anything I saw that was um, particularly amazing yesterday in either of our two choice strikers. Number four, then, I'm going to go into the pace of the game. Particularly the first half, very slow. Um, you know, again, we, we dominate in possession. We have so much possession and we don't really do anything with it. You know, if you look at Liverpool and you look at City, I was watching Liverpool the other day 
um, Salah and Mane and all of them together. Su such fast paced football, you know, you can see why they've won the league by a mile. And I just don't really see that in us. I see a lot of players maybe a little bit unsure of themselves. Um, not as confident. I don't know. I don't really know what it is, but it makes doesn't make no difference for me. It makes no sense to me because we're playing against West Ham. You know, you expect when you see a performance like we did against City to come and then play like that against West Ham, who are miles apart, literally on the table, um, is disappointing and it's very very confusing for me. And that can only come from mentality. I'll get that into that in point five. But yeah, we play very slow football sometimes. Nothing really that's that creative. Um, and yeah, a bit disappointing um, from that from that aspect. Like I said, when Sack Frank made the substitutions, um, when Loftus Cheek came on, when Mason Mount came on, um, we sort of seemed to pick up the pace a little bit, fresh legs maybe, but nothing really that I saw was anything to rave about, to be honest. Okay, in, in a point five, and it sort of ties nicely into this one, is the mentality of our players. Um, I think we tend to switch off in games because I think I was watching Frank's post-match review and you know he sort of hit the nail on the head and was, was sort of saying everything I was thinking you know we have the chance to go go top three and every time Chelsea have the chance to close the gap because of a poor result from another team of one of our competitors for some reason we don't seem to take it is that because they feel more relaxed is that because it's too much pressure you know the complete opposite end of the scale I don't know but it would have been so helpful to us to win that game yesterday and it was easily doable and for me I felt like a lot of the players switched off during the game especially defence you know if you look at the second goal that was a complete and utter disgrace for Charles Football Club it was basically two of our centre backs completely switching off completely dropping the ball literally and um, causing us another goal and, and making our, our climb into top four just that much harder. So I think the mentality of the players needs to improve because I believe they're all really talented players, but we are missing those crucial signings. And I, and I want to leave this on a good note, at least. I thought Pulisic was really good yesterday. Um, I thought he had a fantastic game. Um, I think we can really see the quality that's going to come out in him next season when we have our signings. And I think him, Zayech and Werner together, I think that would be an amazing... Um, amazing partnership all round. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's you know one highlight. Uh, but again, that's next season. So if we if we lose another game, I was talking to all my Chelsea mates, and we're all fuming. Nearly swore then. We're all fuming after that game because it's just a waste, isn't it? It's, it's a waste of an opportunity to close the gap, to to seal top four, to not seal top four, but you know make it a lot easier on ourselves um, and you know to, to move further away from our competition which is Man United and and now you know Leicester losing against Everton thank you Everton thank you Carlo uh, was just a massive opportunity for us is all I can say and just really really disappointed in me that we come out and we play like that and throughout the whole game I was just really really mad because I was seeing some football that I don't think we should play at Chelsea Football Club I think we're far better than that um, I would like quite a few players to be dropped uh, for the next game. You comment below, let me know who you think. Sorry, this video's going on for ages, but let me know what you think. Um, if you agree with any of my five points, um, you know, I, I'll say it first and foremost, I think our defence is the main thing that let us down yesterday, particularly our centre backs. Um, and you can make a high case for Alonso as well. I don't want to be too harsh on Dave, although obviously it wasn't his best day. Uh, but Dave does try. You know, I think we're going to go and simply just completely drop the ball, drop the ball, um, switched off mentally and you just really cannot afford to do that uh, when you're, you know, racing to be in, in the top four. Anyway, comment below guys. Thank you for listening to my very, very annoyed and angry video. Uh, I try to not raise my voice in these videos, I try to be nice. Anyway, thank you so much for the 100,000 subscribers. Uh, please keep subscribing, please click the subscribe button, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will continue to do more of them. Got you, please. So annoying.